the road is watching When I'm confused In troubled time He's there calling me When I am down, hurt and falling Behind the wheel is my God Well, friends, it's so great to see you. Listen to me. As being a farmer, I suppose most of my life has been, a good lot of my life, in fact, has been in a tractor seat. And there's certain jobs in the farm when you have time to think. Sort of, you're an autopilot, you might say, and you're, you're just doing the same routine, and you, your thoughts can wander a bit. And, and some of my best thoughts actually come from the tractor seat. And I want to do a wee series, just a few wee thoughts from the tractor seat. Maybe that's why I'm so excited to be in this international. This is a 574 international made around the 1970s and made in Doncaster in England. And it's because of the badge, you see. Well, I'm reminiscing a wee bit as well because when I was about 12, we had a 275 international came to the yard and then a 414. And so a lot of fond memories of the international. But only quite recently I realised just what the badge actually means, the badge in the front. And you'll, you'll see a wee shot of that coming up now. The badge, the IH badge. International Harvester and it's only recently I discovered the thinking behind the badge because some of you may say well International Harvester IH it stands to sense but the actual thinking behind the badge was when you look in the centre of the badge you'll see the man, the pilot, the driver and if you look at the two black bits those are the two wheels you see so immediately you look at International Harvester you remember the person behind it who designed the badge in the first place was thinking of the farmer out in the field he was a driver and there he was on his machine. Now okay the driver in the middle has got a square head but we'll not we'll forget all about that. But the IH means of course the driver and the two wheels beside it. But you know friends when I look at this badge I get excited because I see another picture in this badge. And I want to take you just for a few seconds to the Word of God and, and the Holy Bible itself and I'll look chapter 23. Here's a picture that I can share with people because when you look at this badge and get to know what the thinking behind, my personal thinking behind the badge. In Luke 23, I'm taking him to the cross at Calvary. And the Lord Jesus was on the cross. Can you picture this in your mind, friends? Even as you look at this badge in front of this tractor, the Lord Jesus Christ was on the cross at Calvary. And beside of him was two thieves, two scoundrels, two people that were so high up in criminality that they're, that they're actually going to be crucified. And that was the highest form of punishment in those days with the Romans. And here was two people, the Lord Jesus Christ in the middle, the Son of God, dying for you at the cross of Calvary. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And then beside him was these two thieves, these two murderers. And friends, the picture I want to give you from the Word of God in Luke chapter 23, that says that these two thieves were, were cursing and swearing. They were blaspheming with each other and they were cursing and swearing. And then all of a sudden one of them said to the Lord Jesus, If you're the Christ, if you be the Christ, why do you not save yourself? And then you can save us as well. Friends, he was mocking. This one on the cross, this beside the Lord Jesus, he was mocking God, you see. He was mocking God. But then friends, come very close at the minute because the other thief, his conscience began to quicken, you see. And the other thief looked over past the Lord Jesus and looked at his, his friend dying on the far side and he says, do you not fear God? All of a sudden, both of them were swearing, cursing and swearing, but all of a sudden, God's sovereign grace came into this one thief on the right hand side of the Lord Jesus. And he cried out, do you not fear God? He says, do you not fear God? And all of a sudden, he began to feel guilty about his own sin because he said to his friend, we know why we're here. 
We deserve to be here. We deserve to go to hell. We know why we're here. But this just man in the middle, he's done nothing wrong. He's done nothing amiss. And friends, in these few seconds, my friends, if you're coming very close at this minute, there's hope for you. It doesn't matter whether I'm speaking to somebody, maybe you're in prison at the minute. Maybe you've no understanding of the Bible. Maybe you know absolutely nothing of anything. Maybe you're deep in the depths and the pits of sin itself. Maybe you're so low that you can't get any lower. There's hope for you. Because this dying thief says, do you not fear God? And then all of a sudden, he went on a wee bit further and he said to the Lord Jesus, oh, remember me, he says. But will you remember me when you get into your kingdom? All of a sudden, he knew where he was going at this particular minute. But he knew there's something special about the Lord Jesus. There's, a, there's an air of something here that happened in just a few seconds of time. Remember this dying thief, he's, he's, he couldn't move his hands. His hands was tied to the cross. They were nailed to the cross. He couldn't move his feet. But all he could do was look with his eyes. And he looked at the one beside him and he looked at the Lord Jesus Christ. He took a look and my friends, he lived. Now hold on a wee minute here. Just go back a wee bit here. He confessed his sin before God here on this cross. Do you not fear God, he says to the little boy. Do you not fear God? In those seconds, he began to realise his own sin because the Lord let him see his own sin that he deserved to go down. He deserved to go to a lost eternity. And then he said to the Lord Jesus, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. In those few milliseconds of time, you see, a wonderful change happened. He confessed his sin before God. And he said to the Lord, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the Lord Jesus Christ looked at him and came back and said, Today, he says, you will be with me in paradise. Today, immediately, right now, within a few seconds, when we draw our last physical breath, you will be with me in paradise. You will be with me in heaven. Oh, friends, that gives me such hope. And I pray that will give you such hope. There's a, there's a chance for you. There's a chance for you, regardless of your background, regardless where you've come from, as far as the pits of sin is concerned. You know you're a sinner. And that is the greatest day in your life when you discover that you are a sinner. Most people out there think they're all right, you see. They're not as bad as somebody else. But the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And my lovely people, listen to me. There's a message in this wee tractor seat here today, friends, that could help maybe just one person. And you feel low, you feel that you're desperate, you feel that you can't get any lower. Maybe you're watching this from a prison cell, maybe through your mobile phone or whatever. My friends, there's hope for you. There's hope for this dying thief who deserved to go to hell. But he was given a reprieve, you see. The greatest reprieve that any human being could ever get is to be come under conviction of sin in the first place. To realise what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us at the cross at Calvary, that he's given us a way out. A way out. And this dying thief is they received that last day. And the Lord said, oh, today you'll be with me in paradise. Friends, today, 2,000 odd years later, that dying thief is in heaven. As we share this wee message from this international tractor, he's in heaven. The other boy went down to lost eternity. He couldn't see it. He mocked God. But the Lord, by his sovereign grace, let that thief see that there was a way out. And you know, friends, in 1985, International was sold. Case brought it over, and that's why I'm wearing the coat here. As a Case International. And one day, friends, I was looking at the tractor, and you'll see the wee slide going up in a minute, just to the Case International. And I looked at the word C, you know, and I just thought, you know, the greatest day in my own personal life when I came under conviction of sin. When I came under conviction of sin. When I saw Christ, what Christ had done for me at the cross at Calvary. And the Lord brought me at 13 years old just to, to a place where I could see my own son. Just like this thief on the cross. He could see it in the last two or three seconds of his life. He saw it in the last two or three seconds because God allowed him to see it. And then I looked at the in case and it reminded me, of, it reminded me of, of the day when I was 13 and I acknowledged my son before a holy God. And how I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. How I accepted that. I didn't understand it, but I still accepted the Lord as my Lord. I asked the Lord Jesus into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And then, friends, the S and case comes so real to me. Now I'm sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
how the Bible calls God's people sheep. When he says, my sheep will hear my voice. And he says, I know them. They follow me. I will give on to them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And then friends, I looked at the word salvation. I saw the S and the word saved, to be saved for time and eternity. Not because of anything that I could do. Not because I stuck my hand up. Not because I ran up to the front. Not because I signed some wee card. Because I looked at the only one that could give me eternal life. Just at that thief, he looked and lived at the only one that could give it to him. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When he says, I am the, the Lord says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Oh friends, I look at the E in case then. Oh, I look at the E, eternal life. Eternal life begins here and this earth. In John 17, 3, it says, This is life eternal, that I may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus Christ. And now I said, Oh, friends, when I looked at the international, when I looked at the driver, when I looked at the two thieves, when I looked at the case, when I looked at the words at the side of the tractor, I thought, Oh, what an awesome God we have. I wonder, my friend, I wonder as you're listening to this and looking at this, I wonder as God began to speak to you. I wonder as He drawing you. You're, you're beginning to see just a wee glimmer of spiritual light. My lovely person, wherever you are, that is the greatest day in your life. There's no day like that day. Will you remember the words that the Lord Jesus used to that thief, that robber, that scoundrel? You can look it up for yourself in the Word of God and you'll find it in Luke chapter 23. And the Lord said to this thief, Today, he says, you will be with me in paradise. Friends, I want to ask you a question. Do you know where you're going when you draw your last physical breath? If you can say, yes, George, I do know where I'm going. But I pray that you know the truth of God's word, that you know that you're going to heaven. And if you still feel that you're still in that depth, pit of sin itself, then I pray you'll get onto your knees and you'll cry unto God for mercy. And you will look at the only one that can save you. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And cry unto God for mercy and ask him to save your soul. As we thought us from this we track to this day, I pray that it might be an encouragement just for one person somewhere, by God's sovereign grace, by God's mercy, that you will realize your sin, and you will seek forgiveness, and you will cry unto God for mercy. Today, the Lord Jesus Christ said to that thief, I wonder if he's speaking to you at this very minute. Today you will be with me in paradise. May God bless you all. God bless.